So if you've created a directory before, you know that data enrichment and data cleaning is the most boring part. It's easily the part where I dread the most and I've actually stopped projects midway because I didn't have any other way to enrich data faster at least until now. And I have a lot of half-baked directory websites that are in amazing niches that uh, I, I just stopped because I just couldn't take it anymore. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to automate the enrichment process. Now I am gonna use a location-based niche. I'm gonna be using dog parks as an example today. So what is data enrichment and what role does it play when it comes to creating a profitable directory? Well, I would say there's two main things. On your directory listing, you want it to be more valuable than the information you can find on Google Maps, right? Otherwise, people would just go to Google Maps. And the second thing is that it's gonna have a role when it comes to SEO because having unique and tailored listing descriptions for every single one of your listing pages is gonna be really important. It's gonna allow you to rank for more keywords. It's also going to provide value to the person visiting your website and checking out a specific listing. If people are staying on your website, clicking around, they're engaged and they keep coming back, those are good signs that are going to tell Google to boost your website up in the rankings. Those user metrics are huge nowadays with all this AI spam. Most times people create AI generated descriptions and they're not very tailored to the actual listing. It doesn't provide much value, but I'm gonna show you how to create a very, very high quality and tailored description. But before that, I am going to be showing you how to enrich your data first. Now your data enrichment will look very different based on what niche you choose for your directory. But just thinking off the top of my head, let's say that you were creating a directory on your local game store and you wanted to create a nationwide directory on all the LGSs, the local game stores in the country, then maybe you would wanna know if one specific game store sells you know, Pokemon cards or Magic the Gathering cards and whatever else people might be interested in knowing before going to an LGS. Whereas if you have a plumber directory, for example, you're probably interested in if they offer 24 hour emergency plumbing, what types of services they even provide, maybe some pricing details and how quick their service is. At least this gives you an idea of different types of data enrichment. When you go on a listing on Google Maps or even go to ChatGPT or another LLM and ask for information, about local areas, it's not going to by default tell you all of these enrichment features. You're gonna to have to dig around a little bit. And that is the exact problem we're trying to solve. Just wanted to give you a couple examples before we dive in. I think we can jump on in now and uh, hopefully this will save you a bunch of time. Before I forget, please join the Ship Your Directory free community. It is and getting spicy in there. And by spicy, I mean educational. All right, professional, that's what I'm saying. Tons of free resources, but most importantly, really cool people in there that you can learn from. I'm also the most active in there. I'm in there every day. So if you have any questions, chances are I'll probably see it in there. I'll leave a link in the description and we can continue on here. Now, this is how I used to enrich data. I would go to reviews and I would click on search review and I would type in, you know, shade, for example. I would try to read the reviews to understand how much shade and if there was shade at a dog park. And that's the process I would repeat anytime I needed information on a specific location. So it's obviously very manual. When it comes to creating a nationwide directory, we can't be doing this for every single dog park in America. That would be absolutely mad. But that is why I worked with a fellow viewer named Min, shout out to Min, to create this. And it's essentially a way to automate exactly what I just showed you. So the process goes like this. I scraped this data off Outscraper, every single dog park in the United States. I'm not gonna go into it in too much depth, but you essentially need to clean your data once you scrape it. Now it comes to enriching the data. And when it comes to enriching, I always use Google Maps as a reference to understand what people want to know. And I look at the review tags. And this is one example here where we can see that shade is a popular feature that people expect to see at their dog parks. People want to know if there's parking, you know, water bowls. So using these Google tags, we can uncover a lot of the common patterns, the common features that people want in a dog park. Now, another way you can figure out what is important in terms of data enrichment is you can use hrefs and you can search up your keyword and chances are it's worth adding as an enrichment feature if you see that there's a lot of volume. So off-leash dog parks is one. Indoor dog parks right over here. And lastly, you can use Reddit. You know, that's a great free resource. If you just want to stick to Google Maps and Reddit, start reading forums and different posts to understand what is most valuable when people make their decisions on different 
places and locations they go to. That's a great option. Now, since I am working on a full build out video for dog parks, I might as well show you all the different enrichment features that I found. There are shade bags, water, indoor, outdoor, off leash, bench, trash cans, the list goes on. So how it works is pretty straightforward. You start by uploading your CSV file, but before you actually upload your CSV file, you definitely need the Google Maps URL or the location link. So real quick, what I mean is, you know, this is Outscraper. And if we scroll down to the bottom in parameters, we can scroll all the way down to location link. Now this location link is essentially the Google Maps URL. So you definitely need it in order for this to work. So this is my scrape data from Outscraper. And as you can see, here is my URL. And if I just click on the first one here, that is the URL that we took. Once you have your location link, you can go ahead and upload your file. So for example, this is a sample CSV of 300 dog parks here. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a column here. So these columns are for all those different enrichment features or enrichment attributes that you found through Google Maps. So one was called shade, and I'm just gonna put that on the very top. That just describes the column name here. It's gonna create a new column. The keywords option is shade as well because what I'm saying here is I want to crawl every single review that contains the word shade. And for the prompt, I'm gonna say, does this dog park have shade? So that's an example of one of the enrichment attributes. I could go ahead and add more if I want to, but this is pretty manual. So we did something cool where we could upload your enrichment attributes instead, because in my case, I have a lot of them. So I could just click on a file right here. And I've prepared a small little data sheet here that includes all of the things that I want to enrich. I'm gonna go ahead and just upload that. And here we can see that it automatically populated with all of my enrichment attributes and keywords. Now, chances are you probably have a lot less in terms of enrichment columns, but it depends how deep you wanna go and how much value you're trying to provide, right? Let's go ahead and just click enrich data. We have completed our enrichment if we scroll to the very right. So here you can see that there are three columns that were generated for every single one of these columns here. So the first column is just showing you the exact review that mentions the word shade. And the second column is the explanation. So whether or not there is or isn't, it should mention it here. And then the last column is just a true or false. We confirmed whether or not there was shade, water benches, a fenced in area, an off leash area, all within minutes. So this is a huge time saver. The view is a little bit tough on this screen. So I always recommend just downloading the CSV. I know it's a lot, but this is essentially the Excel sheet that I downloaded. And here we can see all of these enrichment columns here. And if it doesn't have enough information, it will say not enough information. So at this point, I have the enriched data that I went ahead and used through our tool. But now I wanna write a few sentence description that's gonna go on every single one of these listings. So I'm gonna show you how I generate the highest quality descriptions. And I think they sound and look amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and create a column to the right here. There's probably a lot of different ways to use different LLM maybe you prefer Gemini or Claude or Claude or ChatGPT. What matters in my experience is the prompting. Right out of the box, I will say Claude has it good. You know, I have been using Claude a lot. So the reason why I enriched the data first was because I actually wanna write the description and have it inspired by the actual reviewers. And so that way I'm not copying the reviews, I'm not plagiarizing, taking something that is not mined. All of these reviews, offer a lot of great context, right? So I work off Google Sheets, so I've been using this tool called GPT for Sheets, and I really like it. You know, it's worked out really well for me. So the way it works is I can basically just create a custom prompt. And in my prompt, I can reference different cells. So here I can put in my prompt, but I actually created a prompt already. And this is the prompt that I created. It's to write a three sentence description based on these cells. And S, V, Y, A, B, A, E. These are all different cells for this review column. That's why you see, you know, at the very end, there's column BI, which is the space review enrichment column. But essentially this is how I'm directing this prompt towards the reviews. And I also mentioned that I want the name of the dog park, which is column A, which we can see here, as well as the city, which is column F, and then the state, which is column H. I want all of those referenced in my description. Feel free to pause the video and steal this prompt if you end up using this tool. But in my prompt, I do say to ignore the rating, uh, don't mention any names or reviewers, don't plagiarize directly from the review, 
use unique words and just try to give a neutral description of the dog park based on the reviews. I've actually tested all of the different LLMs for this tool and this by far does the best job. And I'll show you a couple comparisons in a second, but if we just run this here, um, we can see that it'll create three different rows and there we go. So this is the description that it created for Coronado Dog Beach. You can pause and read it. Now I did buy a good amount for this test because I wanted to run multiple experiments. And I will say Claude is the most expensive by far. It's probably well known to you at this point if you are someone who experiments and plays with a lot of these different LLMs. But for those who are uninitiated, yes, Claude is definitely the most expensive, but also it's so much better in terms of just the semantic feel and tone of their writing. It's, it's so much better. For a quick comparison, I did run the same exact prompt for the same exact row with the same exact enrichment but I just changed the model. And here we can see that Gemini gave us this. So Coronado Beach is a popular dog spot for dog owners and the beach is known for soft sand, gentle waves, and a friendly atmosphere. So this one wasn't bad to be fair. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. This is another description generated from Gemini. And I really didn't like how it still mentioned some reviewers mentioned. Like I didn't want that to be a thing and it seemed to not listen to me very nicely. But overall, it just sounds very mediocre. And I'm not really convinced from reading it that it sounds like the opinion of someone who went to that exact dog park. Because that's what it should sound like, right? So looking at ChatGPT 4.0, we have this. Again, um, you know, it mentions visitors appreciate the clean sand. Now, again, that's not too bad, but when we look at a second example, it kind of starts to use similar language. It also use similar adjectives to describe things. And overall, it just ends up really quickly sounding the same. And over the course of 5,000 different listing descriptions, I really don't want to have similar adjectives or the same of anything. I need it to be sounding very, very different. We're all getting sharper when it comes to detecting like AI sounding text. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. In this case, I feel like it's somewhat obvious and it's not amazing. With Claude, we have just a richer vocabulary. We have much different cadences and sentence lengths, right? They, they really vary it up. Obviously, this is a small sample size. I only did a couple, but there were some pretty bad results with Gemini where they didn't even read it. Like, like, this was a message that I got. Please provide the data for cells, shade, underscore reviews. This is ChatGPT 4.0. Sure, please provide the specific details. Whereas Claude just went ahead and did its thing. Never had to worry once about the quality of Claude. I'm not even working for them, so I don't know why I'm talking them up so much, but the product is great and I'm really happy with it. It does come at a price because it's the premium option, but um, in my opinion, it could be worth it. However, I will say with better prompting, you know, I could probably spend more time just crafting an amazing prompt and then just using Gemini and it would be super cheap. But for this project, I am against time because I am trying to do a full build out video where I build the entirety of dog parks. So I decided to just buy it, but you could probably get away with using Gemini and just prompting it much, much better. So that is how you can do a really high quality job enriching your data and not have to spend literally days and days to clean and enrich a massive data set like this dog bark one, for example. I hope this is valuable to you because that's why we made it. <laughs> uh, it's really valuable to me. And at the end of the day, it's one of those things where it is a scratch your own itch situation. I am gonna use this tool to pump out a lot more directory websites. So let me know what you think. I'm curious to know if any of you have a different process, whether it is with the data enrichment or the actual listing description automation. Uh, I know there's a lot of different approaches out there. We all seem to be kind of doing our own thing here. So let me know, I will leave links to all of these tools in the description and you can go ahead and use it to save some time. And that's the whole goal. But as always, let me know if you have any questions around this tool and let me know if you have any errors. Our enrichment tool is in its infancy. Like we just launched this to the public. We do expect there to be some challenges and hurdles, but we're ready to make it right. Just let us know if you had any issues. And if you didn't, also let us know. Don't forget to join the free Ship Your Directory community. That is the place where it's popping. But uh, if you haven't already joined, then I hope to see you there. If you have, please keep me posted on your progress and your direct rebuilds. With that guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video and hope you have a great day. See ya.